So there's no better place to use poetry as a tool against an oppressive system than in South Africa. Poets and writers in the late 1960s and early 1970s saw themselves as spokespersons for the black struggle in the country. And after South Africa gained liberation, this big question was asked, what should post-liberation poetry look like in the country today? We're joined in studio uh, by the Ari Redeng Ngonzo Dialogue on Ancestral Poetry Speaker, uh, and that is Khalifa Wa Mokhodi. Madumil Madume de Kai. Redeng Lege. Redeng, go pa ho bakanya seng. Eh. Khafela o rile Khalifa. Yo, re askisi askisi. No, no, ke 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 di mo tateng. Awa. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for indulging us this morning. Um, I'd like to start with when you knew that written word was something, or spoken word as well, was something for you. I, I grew up with this thing, you know. For me, it started very early. I knew this is what I wanted to do from jump. Uh, from the 80s, I was involved with uh, early rap stuff. You know, that time when he had Boom Mr. T and stuff rapping, hey, everybody, uh, you know me, my face is on the papers and on TV. So I, I love that stuff. But also at the same time, I had my grandfather who used to recite during family gatherings. It's a thing at home to recite during family gatherings. So it used to fascinate me a great deal. But I knew that it's not something that I wanted to keep it at home. Uh, fortunately, when I was 18, I came across Don Matera when I was a student at FUBA. And I realized that there's something bigger to the word than just you know playing with words. But in the play with words, there's a sense in which you can connect to deeper voices that, you know, or life-giving forces. So for me, it has always been that. The word has always been with me. The word is me. I live the word. Mm. We are talking today about poetry in post-apartheid uh, South Africa. Can we go back and look at the contribution of the arts as a whole during the struggle for liberation in South Africa. So you have the exiles and the inziles, and you also have those who contributed dramatically towards the liberation of this country through spoken and written word. Yes, I mean, look, you say post-apartheid South Africa. Others would say neo-apartheid South Africa, uh, because there's a sense in which certain tendencies have lingered. And if you look at what poetry was about, particularly from the 70s with the Black Consciousness Movement, the, the Ingwa Pele, Madingwanas, the Lififi Tladis, there was a sense in which people wanted to dig deeper into the self. Hence, the movement Diabo Malombo was not just the band Malombo, mm. but Malombo was about connecting to deeper spiritual forces in order to, you know, uh, fight this uh, thing that is called, the, this monster that was called the apartheid regime. So now, <clears throat> this is the kind of stuff that one grows up on, right? That, but then, uh, I remember in, when I was young, there was a news uh, a, a, a conference uh, I, I, I forgot what the title was, but the question that they were asking was, what will the writer write about when apartheid goes, right? And people spoke a lot of great English there, but I thought it was an unquestioned because, you know, it's important to understand that the problem is systematic. It has nothing to do with people, right? Even as people change, uh, you know, uh, fa uh, uh, become faces for new regimes. There's a sense in which certain tendencies have come to stay. Of course, when the new South Africa kicks in, you had, you know, praise poets, which are available to sing praises to, 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 to the governments and the, to the people who rule, the so-called, you know, poets of the nation and, you know, you know how they do, halala this, halala that, halala tafu de, halala, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that kind. So, yeah, but for me, it was a different take because I'm a student of people like Aikwe Yama 
a student of people like Ngugi Wationgo. So when I was growing up, uh, I joined the African Writers Association, which, uh, and we were given workshops by people like Bo Ndade Mpathele. So I, I understood quite a bit uh, uh, very early. So I understood that you needed to use the word to connect to a, a life-giving process. And I tried to then think about where we are now. And you see now we have the elections, right? Mm. And just for the way in which the politicians are performing, you can see this drive to become, you know, men of the people and women of the people. But you look at, you know, the realities of, on the ground, they speak to a different something, you know, mm. that, you know, they're unable to reach. Mm. So, and that is the thing, as a writer then, you begin to think there's a sense in which we need to also be ahead of the politician and start to create a conversation that is not led by them. And that is where I come in as a writer, because I don't think any conversation that is led by politicians has led anyone anywhere. Mm. That now, you know, you want to lead the conversation as a writer. You speak of some of the issues that they are detached to that are on the ground. Talk us through some of the issues that you see and you write about. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, let's do this, né? because it's easier to demonstrate. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, than to, uh, to, 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 yeah, uh, then we can explain. I can, we can try something like that. Yeah. Ridicule, ridicule, who would study puts of Pacella, Bomatula Mela, Mafurem Baritinehead, Ribonimano, Baba Helaman Temotu, Geribonimano, Baba Helaman Temotu, Gaberi put to Killer Alla Tela Cacala, Geren Gaberi put to Killer Alla Tela Cacala, Bahana Camanteba, Tampure, Raitatova, Tuba, Tuba, Raitatova, Resenga. Right, <laughs> But to what I did a horrid tonocol, Rene Rumile Mabodu Tocolo, Baile, Baile, no, 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 Cotacabo, Boduvai Sapinet, Cotabai Fapu Hinet, Cotabai Tobinet, Yatu Catena, Yatu Catena, Yatu Catena, Cotanero Nightari Tuke. You, Hunt. Hello again. We're still in conversation with poet Hafela Wamukhodi, uh, who just delivered a very spiritual piece for us. So perhaps for the benefit of all of our viewers, please tell us what you just gave us. <laughs> <laughs> in a very <laughs> short space of time because we yeah, do have a minute. For me, it's interesting. I can remember Africa and it's under translate the yeah. Africa. You see, that's the thing. Africa are different. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. No, anyway. <laughs> Bona. Look, I mean, look, the thing is, Raitatoba means, you know, we are looking deeper mm. into ourselves and sometimes it can be an uncomfortable process. I get it. Bato, bato, baeda. 
Yeah. Okay. So for me, it's about, you know, looking uh, introspective dialogue itself. It's not just about criticizing someone out there because I am you, you are me. So everybody who's in this country uh, reflects me. So in many ways, my problems are your problems. Mm. So it is like that. So it's not, I'm not looking outside myself, although it may seem like that because the, for, I mean, for those who are not initiated, it can be fairly caustic, what I'm saying. But for those who understand, they understand that. We're trying to really, really uh, understand, as they say in Nigeria, where the rain began to beat us, you see. Mm. Because here we are, and we're saying we are free, but, you know, kids are still, you know, dying in the pit latrines. You've seen the kind of stadiums that we built for so much money. I don't want to go there, but that is where we are. So there's a sense in which institutions are decaying, and it's important that artists should not should st step into the picture. Because, look, I mean, it is important to understand that we cannot keep being controlled by people who are in power as artists because this is where we go wrong this idea that your voice can be given to anti-people regimes is problematic to me I do wish we had all the time <laughs> for this important conversation. We will make time, though, yeah. in the future, no doubt. Re Malebo, thank you very much for coming this morning and speaking to, to us. Khalifa uh, Wamu Khokhodi, thank you very much uh, for your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah.